Well, I'm not really liking the camera that's on this uh, computer. But you know, look. But whatever. It is what it is. I can go ahead and do all kind of other shit, but I won't. I'll just let it be the way it is. A few months ago, I made a statement that, you know, society is so messed up that, you know, it's going to take other than blacks, Mexicans, Asians, any other, it's going to take white people to get off their asses and protest. I said that months ago, and I've noticed in this Occupy protest, those are all a lot of young white folks. I called it before it happened that nothing will change around here until some white people got up and did something. But then last week, I complained about the white people in my community that are out there protesting. What kind of old mixed up signal bullshit is that? But I did. I did complain about the people in my community that I've seen on television out there protesting in the Occupy movement. I complained because some of those faces are the faces of the ones that treated me like shit. And why? Am I going back on what I said was going to happen? I knew white people would have to get up and rise to make some things change in this country. But like I said, everybody has their own cause. Everybody has their own personal movement. All these Occupy causes are causes. Their cause is. The civil rights movement was about civil rights. You know, the last movement that we've had recently with uh, the Hispanics in, in the community, uh, the right to migrate, I guess, or immigrate, immigration. Then we need, we need another group or what have you, you know, and so on and so forth. But the Occupy movement is, oh, foreclosures, financial disparity, hardship. What the most, what I'm saying, these groups of people in which you protest against, those who which believe in which they create jobs, these people who create jobs, they would say, I put myself in position to be successful. Why can't you? The problem we have in our country is that there are more people being held back by less people than they are being helped by less people. In other words, I have obstacles in front of me holding me back. This person may have these obstacles. In order to truly achieve, you must overcome your obstacles. Some people can't overcome their obstacles because they're not financially able. Some people can't overcome the lack of education. You know what I mean? Some people can't overcome the lack of funds, the lack of education. The lack Some people can't even speak. See what I'm saying? So everyone has their own idiosyncrasy that will prevent them from getting to the next level. The thing is, the true people out there who actually do succeed, people are being helped. Even Oprah will tell you somebody gave her a chance, an opportunity. You can look at every actor out there. If don't nobody want to listen to you that first time and believe in you, you know, Looks like these singers, these people you find out of nowhere. And somebody else pointed out to me that uh, the other day that Michael Jackson, Madonna, Prince, the Rolling Stones, a uh, few other, it's a handful of, of 
multi-decadal, <laughs> multi-decadal. It's a whole bunch of, there's not that many artists out there that are more than one hit wonders. You know what I mean? Fad-driven artists. You know what I mean? Artists that have put decades in it. 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Tony Bennett. You ask him, is the next 15 year old gonna run out there and get the next Tony Bennett album and understand who the hell Tony Bennett is? You know what I'm saying? You know, so it, 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 what I am trying to tell you is this. People evolve and people change. People need to grow up. People need to, to understand other people's needs, wants, and hurts, feelings. Other people's feelings don't matter anymore. And it don't, and it shouldn't to a, to a point. But as a human being, other human beings ought to learn how to look at things from other people's perspectives. You get a better perspective on yourself if you can see things from a different angle. That's how when you videotape your drunk friend, he's like, oh man, I didn't do that, I didn't do that. And you show the video and he's like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. And then he changes. He tries not to drink so much. He tries not to do this. People can't see themselves anymore. But they always want to look at themselves. They always want to hear themselves. But they can't see themselves for what they really are. A bunch of fucking leeches. Everybody has their own agenda. And nobody gives a damn about anybody else. And that's why there's a divide. I'm not going to help you succeed because I know what you did the last time somebody helped you. See what I'm saying? It went from us helping each other to we don't trust each other. The good old boys wouldn't hire a black man, wouldn't hire a white woman. You know what I mean? Good old boys, I'm only going to hire one of my, my people. I'm only going to hire another white guy. Those guys ran the range. They did their thing or whatever. That was called favoritism. And they brought a law up. The law was called, you know, you can't do nepotism. So the good old boys network was broke down, but they could still do hire their own people. Asian restaurant come to town. A truly Asian restaurant. They're gonna hire your ass. They don't have to fucking hire you. They're gonna hire either a family member or another Asian. Now I've seen a lot of Hispanic people in those kitchens. But that is not the point. In America, you can hire who you want to hire. And when these companies decided not to hire your asses anymore, it's because we became greedy. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. And I will always tell you, if it still only costs 23 cents to make a loaf of bread, why are we paying $4? $6? Three dollars. And when you get the 99 cent bread, is it really bread? You ever leave some of that stuff that you buy around 4th of July on top of the refrigerator? Remember one year we bought some hot dog buns. The buns were on the refrigerator for four months. They didn't spoil. People who have don't eat the crap that we eat at the bottom of the food chain. I mean, financial chain. We got stores like the dollar store where people used to just go to the dollar store maybe for some seasoning. Now people are buying their groceries. The dollar store. Society has pushed us down so far that we eat stuff that don't even taste like it used to. You know what I mean? That don't taste right. What's that? Is that what I think it is? It's not what it's supposed to be. So people are just lucky to eat. So we all out there, we have all reasons to do what we do. Everybody's getting crushed down. The more money you lose, the further down you go. You can't save. The job is cutting back. You're going to have to ask you to come in a few less hours. So they can save some money. Everybody's being squeezed. In our country, the first thing they do, we need to help the banks. And I even told you, I said it. You give the money to the people, the people have another choice. I'm not going to ride around with $40,000 in my car. I'm not going to leave forty grand in the house. 
I'm going to put my money in the bank. People who have bills, pay the people's bills off. Get them up off the, uh, get, get us out of the holes we're in. You can't beat someone down mentally, morally, and emotionally, and then tell them, go get a job. Where the good old boys are trying to keep their jobs. Well, let me, I can hire my brother. That's about as far as I can go. Can't even hire your friends no more. The good old boys can't. Then these big companies where you used to get all your contractors from, they're hiring Miguel and Pablo. Why? Pablo is going to work his time. And when Pablo puts himself in position, he's going to hire someone else that's going to listen to him. And not somebody's going to talk bad about him and turn up their nose like they're better. And another thing, that's America. You can hire Miguel for nine dollars an hour. He'll work his way up to fifteen or twenty, and you can fire his ass. And when he goes to get another job, he's not gonna bitch because he has to start back over at nine dollars an hour, or eight dollars an hour, or even six dollars an hour. Us Americans, I deserve. They owe me. They don't owe you shit, and that's why we're eating fucking crow right now. Because, oh, they owe me. I deserve to start off at my new job at what I left my old job at. That's what us Americans do. We bitch and complain about everything around us and demand what we are owed. And now look, those people who owe us, they got paid. They got paid. Those who owe us got paid. And we owe them. How are you going to exonerate the bank and they're not exonerating the people? They're the ones that wrote those faulty loans. If you look at this close, this is no more than a land grab. You stupid fucking people. I see people of white skin moving into foreclosed houses who speak a different language. I asked the guy, hey, you know, how you doing? He turned his nose up on me so hard it was ridiculous. I'm like, are you German? And then it, it dawned on me that the workers on the house, I spoke to them, they were Lithuanian. And all the workers are Lithuanian. The owner's Lithuanian. The people who bought the house, like three blocks from my house, you know, down a block, noticed, I was talking to those guys, how you guys doing that? owner Lithuanian now a friend of mine pointed out that you know United States you know the economy and everything blah 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 they took a dip so they could bring in foreign military because this motherfucker looked like he was an Arnold's fucking Schwarzenegger movie I thought Stallone was gonna come out from behind the fucking house man we got military troops moving in our neighborhoods from foreign countries. I know, it made a big old leap from our shit. But look at all these houses plunging. And all these investors are now buying it up. What were these investors at before? Before we gave them the money to buy the houses and these buyouts. They're bringing foreigners in here to buy us up. This is another immigration. They're bringing in a new middle class. So, a friend of mine told me he was on a train. The train goes through a national park. They saw foreign troops, foreign uniforms in our national parks. And now, our shit takes a dip, and these people are buying homes up in our country. You don't have to believe me. But, hey, look at it. We're out there protesting in the streets. We got... Russians and Lithuanians buying up the property. You know, there's some Germans out there too, buying it up. We're being infiltrated. You're looking at the brown man. You get invaded by the white man. And you're bitching about Pakistan and an Arab man. But we're in the streets protesting for a million different reasons. And we're not watching our backs. We're not feeding ourselves and we're not taking ourselves serious. 
It's almost like we don't care anymore. You need to see what's going on around you. You need to see who's buying up these houses in your neighborhood. Speak to them. Because that guy looked at me so rude, turned up his nose so hard. What? You're in my neighborhood. I'm just saying hi. I don't want shit from you. I don't need anything you have. I'm just saying hello. Can you get shitted on in your own neighborhood? By some fucking foreigner who has the money to spend? But there would have been some Hispanic guy moving in that house. Then some other white guy being fucking Mexican moving in. Probably taking jobs. Because I noticed when the guy bought the house around the corner, he had all white crew. They all spoke Lithuanian. Two that came out spoke English to me was pretty cool. But when this guy buys the house down the street from my house, he had all Mexican crew. It seems as if the American way does rub off on foreigners who come here. He could have hired a bunch of white guys, a couple of black guys. He had all Hispanic crew. Probably paid them in cash. Cash that'll never be recognized by any American. Probably paid them in euros. They actually earn more than an average American then. Whatever the case may be, why ever they're buying up all the houses in my neighborhood. Oh, there is a national park in my town. That's kind of odd that one of these conspiracy theory guys on the internet had said they was going to be in our national parks. A friend of mine saw a bunch of military stuff as he was on a train going through a national park. We have a bunch of foreigners buying up property at an alarming rate and they all got Euro accents and they all look military. So maybe if you guys learn how to occupy something other than campsites, occupy the ballot boxes, shut down the ports, occupy our state parks, find out who's sleeping in our parks. Because if you can't sleep in our parks, we shouldn't let other military people from other countries sleep in our parks. And when I get back to the beginning of what I said at the beginning, I said this country won't get any better until some white people finally rise up and, and take care of some business. Blacks have marched. Mexicans have marched. Asians haven't done it. Chinese haven't done it. Japanese haven't done it. None of that Euro ring. They haven't done it. But now we see young white people getting up like they did in the early 60s which white people should have actually got their asses up in the 20s. Because if you would have got up in the 20s and stood up for other than opulence in the 20s, we'd have a better world now. Because now we're being invaded by foreign armies. And those armies aren't here to invade us, actually. They're here for when this occupied shit don't work and American troops will not fire on American citizens. When there's 200,000 people in downtown, other than 100 people, other than 1,000 people. When there's 20,000 people marching on City Hall, other than 4,000 people, surrounded by two police forces, with all these police that have popped up out of nowhere. And if you listen to some of these police, they're probably speaking Lithuanian or German, or Russian. Because an American citizen is not going to fire on an American citizen. And you guys are starting to rally in March now. Watch your backs. But it's your fronts you should make more. More secure your fronts. Because those people walking in front of you that look just like you can't even speak your language. And when they speak that broken English, 
and they're not Mexican, and they're not Cuban. They're not even Canadians. And they look like they're about to slide down a window and you hope Bruce Willis comes in to save you? It's not going to happen. We're being overrun. We need to bring our troops home. Place our troops on the borders. Because once they start attacking us, we need our troops to come in. Surround them. Because they're already here. And our troops are over there. And we're out there camping in front of City Hall. We're out there occupying Wall Street, but we're not shutting down the exchange. I know I just said some weird stuff that you probably don't even think makes any sense. But when I walk down the street over here, and I see a bunch of white people out in front, and they're speaking loud as shit, and I don't understand what the fuck they're saying. And they're looking at me like they're the mob. And I walk by it through the wrong neighborhood. Understand this. I come from Richmond, California where motherfuckers fall down. Pop, 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 pop is an everyday sound. When I lived in Oakland, niggas fell down. Cack, 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 cack was all around. When I live in Rosa, you hear pop, pop. People hit the ground, blood, heart straight, stop. So I know drama when I walk up on it. And I know when I see something wrong. And I know when I see a bunch of military people sizing up a neighborhood. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's going to go down. Hell's Angels won't be able to save us. Crips won't be able to save us. The Bloods won't be able to save us. Clan won't be able to save us. Skinheads won't be able to save us. Those are our troops. And you don't believe me. Those are our troops. The police won't be able to save us. Those are our troops. Every little gang in America, every little hate group in America, Every young, able-bodied man in America, those are our troops. So we may be being invaded. We, we might be in the middle of a, a straight jacking. They're carjacking our country. They're country jacking. Yeehaw! But what are we going to do about it? We're not going to do shit. Because we're camping for equal rights. We're camping for equal pay. We're camping for equal bullshit. Tell them. You want to keep telling them? Well, like I said, no matter what we go through, no matter what we do, we all got our problems. You can go ahead and occupy this, but it's too late. You need to go. You know what? Every election should be done on the same day. Governors, mayors, you know why they got it all spread out? This on this time, this on this. They got it all spread out. It's like a spider web. If we broke one whole ring around the web, you can't break the whole web. See what I'm saying? It's a spider web. That web is intertwined and we're stuck in it. We ain't got no freedoms. They're bringing in troops from someplace else to put foot in our ass. Soon. You don't have to believe me. But it's true. It's going to happen. But um, I want you people out there to understand one thing. Don't go camping. Don't go camping. You get on the internet and you find somebody to vote for. Replace everybody in the spider web every chance you get. So the next, the next time they got spots in that web pop open, replace everybody on the web. Replace every name in there. Write a different name in. You find somebody in your community and you write that one person's name in. The least likely candidate. You write that person's name in. The one that is not supposed to win. The one is not supposed to. I do not want her running my. Put her in charge. She's less likely being close to the. Man, do not vote for a millionaire. 
Don't vote for somebody who's got a better than you. Don't vote some. Don't vote for nobody who would sit next to you at a dinner. Don't vote for nobody who who wouldn't help you across the street. Don't vote for somebody who wouldn't shake your hand. Don't vote for somebody who wouldn't let you sit next to them. Don't vote for somebody who wouldn't let you smell in their space. But hey, you can always go camping. Talk about being not treated fairly. You can always complain about Mexicans. You can always complain about blacks. You can always complain about whites. But don't complain when they're rounding your ass up on a bullet train and you don't come back. Don't complain when it's 2015 and we talk about what, oh, Herman Cain. Oh, he sold us to Herman Cain rounded us up in trucks and had us all taken and drug tested and whoever was dirty or drug was arrested. Herman Cain! They searched everyone's house for anything illegal. <laughs> Herman Cain! So, you know, I don't know. You look at the big picture, you look at the little picture, whatever the hell it is, I don't care. I complained about those people I saw on TV from my town because I saw five or six people that treated me like shit since I've been in this town, in the crowd. And I'm like, on my way down there, I have my homeboy, he's got the cameras and shit, I'm gonna do my thing, you know? Got my video glasses ready. Let's go occupy for three days, y'all. Let's do this. Bam! This fool right here, oh no. I'm gonna be sitting down there with people that wasn't right. And then, like I said, I looked deep into it, and I said it, even on my videos, nothing's going to change until white people get up and do something. And then, you know, somebody says, once America starts doing what they're doing overseas, they're going to bring in foreign troops to quell Americans, because this is just going to boil up over and over and over. You know, it's going to get bigger, and it's going to get bigger to where it's, you know, a bunch of people are going to take over a bridge or something. They're going to just, like, occupy a bridge. We're going to occupy the, you know, Brooklyn Bridge for a month. You know, and the tunnel. They're going to occupy it both ways in and out of Manhattan Island. Shut it down. Shut the whole thing down. That's when they're going to bring in the hardheads that are not American. When you go down to Oakland... Say they want to shut down the, you know, the bridge. Say they want to occupy the brand new bridge. Say they want to occupy all the bridges down in the Bay Area. Shut it down. They could do that. But no. They want to stop the 1% from, you know, doing what the 1% do. But they're not going to shut down the stock exchange. You're not going to shut down their money. You're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to turn off their cable. You know what I mean? You're not going to shut down the cable system. You know, you're not going to do anything. But piss off these foreign troops they got in here. They're going to be beating the hell out of you stupid ass people in a few months. And that's going to be the bottom line. You know where I'm going to be at? I'm going to be sitting in my house. Minding my own business. And not giving a damn. Because if I ain't fucking with nobody, shouldn't nobody fuck with me. And if I have to die for my country, it's going to be in my country. I've always said that. I will never go fight in nobody's backyard because you can never win. But hey, motherfuckers got to get ready because I've seen them. Dolph Lundgren just moved in down the fucking street. Dolph Lundgren and a bunch of big motherfuckers. All of them are large. See us Americans? We all punified. I'm going to kick those Lithuanians' ass on Xbox. We're all puny. These are some big guys. Like I said, Dolph Lundgren has moved down the street from my house, and he's a contractor. And now he's not hiring any whites. And all the young guys, they were all, you could tell they were mili military haircuts, the whole shit. Even the, even the young guys were my type, my height. About that. Bigger than me. Damn. 
Hey, but what can I do, man? I got a machete. A whole bunch of gang banging friends. <laughs> It'd be bad. It'd go bad. But I rambled on, on, and on. So when you listen to the Michael Jackson murder trial, is um Michael Jackson on trial for murder? Is Michael Jackson on trial for murder? I've heard a lot of Michael Jackson's name in the Dr. Conrad Murray murder trial. I can understand Michael Jackson was the victim, but it's not the Michael Jackson murder trial. Michael Jackson is not on trial for murder. I gotta go. Talk to you for 30 minutes. Scared to death about the army move down the street and they're not American army. Guy was so... Why are you talking to me, black man? Puny black specimen, why are you talking to me? Why are you talking to me, black man? I didn't say that, but his nose was in the fucking air. Like, how you doing, you know? Are you Russian? Oh, Lithuanian. Oh, you military, huh? They all look like, what the fuck? No, military? Oh, when I was younger, I was in a... What the fuck are you two years older than me? <laughs> I be older than you. Oh, I used to be military. <laughs> little black man. Little black puny man. <laughs> little black thing. <laughs> black puny man. With weenie dog. Black man with weenie dog. <laughs> little black man with weenie dog. <laughs> That shit was weird. All right. Let me go get me something to eat. I talked to you guys for 32 minutes. I didn't think this shit was going to work so good. But, um, yeah, um, stay in touch, man. Those who have my phone number, man, go ahead and call me. You know how I be. Um, all I'm going to do is talk like this on this channel. Tell people what's going around the neighborhood. So um, next time you're on that train going cross country and you go through the state parks, look real close at the uniforms. You know, Americans, Americans don't smoke those little stubby cigarettes like, like in the old Das Vidanya movies. The old movies, the old movies, you see the Russians out there standing in front of the frills and this checkpoint, and they got the little small cigarettes, the Russian uniforms, the big Kushnikov's rifles, rifles and shit. Yeah, man, we're here. And they're here with us. And we're camping for civil rights and to be treated like the corporations do. Stop buying their shit. Take their power from them, dumbasses. Occupy the polls. Do something good for yourselves. Kiss your kids. Re-educate yourself. Do the best you can for somebody else other than yourself. Buy American. And watch your back. The Russians, the Germans... The Lithuanians are here because of the biggest land grab in American history. Crash America, sell up the shit to some new foreigners, restock this country because what's here has been gotten weak. See you later, haters.